Hey guys, Mike Fury Tech. Uh, this video is about a behind the scenes view of how the cache drive works on an Unraid server. Uh, as you saw in my earlier videos, I built an Unraid 6 server. Uh, it has an array of several data drives, two in particular. Uh, both of those data drives are protected by a parity disk. So if any one of those data drives go bad, the parity disk um, will allow me to recover data on those drives. Uh, the one downside of using a parity drive, of course, is when you're writing data to the server, it does, uh, does create a bit of a performance impact during writes. So one of the things Unraid has done, and again, this is in my earlier video, is they allow you to put in a cache drive, which allows you to get the data on the server as fast as possible. So if you're just trying to do a backup or you're trying to write something to your server before you have to like leave the facility uh, or, or your house if you're using it as a media server, you get that information on the server and you're done. And then in the background, Unraid will take that data through a mover. It's, the task is called a mover and it will put it in the proper place on the file system. That's what this video is about, kind of to show you how that works. From a user perspective, you don't care, you don't know, you put the data on the server and it always looks like it's in your share, right? So the actual physical location of the file is completely uh, hidden from the end user. What we're doing here is we're peeking under the covers and seeing where it is at any given point in time when it goes to the cache drive and then after it gets moved into your array itself. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna get on with the, the video. If you like what you see here, um, please feel free to click like. If you want to see additional information about how Unraid works, uh, whether it's on the Docker's virtual machine, just basic operations, or even more information on this topic itself, please feel free to leave your comments below, and I'll be happy to do that. So, that said, let's get started with the demo. Hey guys, this is Mike Fury Tech. I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of to show you how the cache drive worked in Unraid. So as you saw from my previous video, I had set up my RAID array to have, in this case, two different uh, data drives along with a parity drive. All three of those are four terabytes each, as you can see over here. Um, again, as we talked about earlier, we don't need to have them as four terabytes each. They can, you can mix and match with Unraid. It's one of the nice features of Unraid. Um, and you can see they're not necessarily filled to the same capacity. And Although you can have data striped evenly or at least distributed evenly across your drives, uh, I chose to fill them a little bit differently because what I wanted to do is use this as a media server. Um, one of the advantages of Unraid also is that it can spin down drives you're not using. And what I didn't want to do is be halfway through a movie, have the movie split across multiple drives, have to wait for an awkward pause while it spun up that second drive to resume the movie. So I had set it up so a complete movie is always contained on a single drive uh, and I can move stuff around that's fine either way the parity drive protects me from uh, a single drive failure on up to 12 different drives uh, the other thing I mentioned earlier is I also have this cache drive here and this one happens to be one terabyte and the advantage of this is when I'm copying files to my network or to my server um, when I have a parity drive uh, large copies can tend to slow down as it's writing that parity information. So what I like to do is just get the data on the server as quick as possible. So I, inst I installed this cache drive. So as you copy your data to the server, it writes to this cache disk. And then there's a process called a mover, which runs automatically. I think it's like at two or three in the morning. But if you look, there's a button here. You could run it immediately if you wanted to. I typically don't. Now, files up here in this array, they're protected uh, from drive failure. The cache, I have a single disk. So technically, if that drive went out before it got copied to my array up here, the data could be lost. Um, so Unraid will let me put in multiple cache disks, basically to run as a mirror uh, until it gets copied. I'm not too worried about it. I just don't delete the original files until the next day after they've been moved. And again, it's a media server. There's nothing on here that really can't be replaced for the most part. And things that can be replaced are backed up redundantly. 
Uh, the other drive you'll see on here also is this flash drive. All that is is a 16 gig um, USB thumb drive, really. Uh, and what's on there is the operating system. So very much like FreeBSD, very much like a lot of these Linux-based uh, operating systems, uh, they boot off a USB thumb drive. Now the advantage to that is, and by the way, the reason you can do that is because the OS is very small and inefficient. You're not going to be running Windows off a thumb drive anytime soon. But the advantage of that is all the drives that are on this system can be used for storage, which is really what I want. So I don't have to go out here and waste an entire disk um, just for the operating system and then build up the rest of the system using my storage array. So that's kind of nice. And by the way, if I, I didn't really build this thing for speed so much, even though it is a very fast uh, network appliance. But things I could do, I could put in multiple NIC cards in here uh, to speed up the network access. I could change my cache drive to an SSD if I wanted to. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things I could do. For what I built this for, it's running absolutely perfect. Um, and you can see up here, there's a lot of other things. Like I can see all my shares that are here and how they're defined. Any users on the system, uh, my system configuration. And maybe I'll make another video going through all these options. But the few I wanted to show you, if I go out to Docker, uh, these are just various Dockers I've got installed on this. And these are essentially, I don't want to say they're virtual machines, but it's sort of the same concept, right? So you got a self-contained application it runs. It's got its own built-in file system. Um, and they're sort of sandboxed from the rest of the system. And you can see the ones with the green arrows are actually running right now. The other ones are shut down. So I've got a Dropbox dro uh, Docker on here. So what this does is it synchronizes with my Dropbox server, sorry, with my Dropbox account. Uh, and you can see here where it maps my data from the actual internal uh, Docker file system out to my actual file system um, in my RAID array. So if I don't do that, I can't really get inside the, the quote sandbox to get to my file. So I do need to have that mapped out. Um, I put it in Dropbox sort of as an experiment. I've got a few issues with this. Um, I'll probably uninstall it at some point. I mean, it's already in the cloud. Uh, the other two that I really use on a regular basis is uh, my Plex Media Server. And this basically is what I just use to serve up uh, any movies or anything else I have in this box. And I have BitTorrent Sync, which is really like a local Dropbox. It uses the BitTorrent technology to synchronize between um, this particular NAS box, I've got the QNAP NAS box, which is running it, which also syncs with my BitTorrent sync, and also two desktop PCs and several devices. Um, and I'll probably do a video on that. And also something you'll probably see on here in the future, which I'm going to make a video on, would be uh, own cloud as well. So that's your Dockers. Now, if you're looking for a more traditional virtual machine setup, Unraid supports that as well. It's over here under VMs. And I've got two installed right now. I've got Windows 2012, which I use sort of as a, uh, uh, a lab SQL server. Uh, that's shut down at the moment. And I've got Windows 10 running right now. And that's actually just running in the background as we speak doing a Windows update. Uh, and I just use that if I needed to run some kind of background Windows application to download or something. Um, if you cl click on it, you can see there's a start, stop, log. Um, to access it, you use VNC remote, and again, topic for another video. But again, I've got Docker's, I've got virtual machines, uh, all running on my Unraid server. Uh, if I go back to my dashboard here, shows me the health of, well, shows me all my Docker's that are running, my virtual machines right here, shows me the health of all my drives. So I've got my, uh, my parity drive, my two data drives, my cache drive, and you can see I've got a lot more room for expansion on this box smart status of all my drives and how much each drive is utilized. Also shows me my CPU utilization, which is actually quite high right now. Remember, I've got a Windows update running on a virtual machine in the background. I'm only using 47% of my memory. Um, that's about it. So what I do want to show you, though, is uh, how this cache drive works. I'm going to go back to this main here where I can see a high-level overview of my actual physical drives. Um, as opposed to, I don't really want to show you all my shares, but they're in there. Um, so right now, let's take a look. 
uh, if I go to my disk one and over here I've got this view which kind of brings up a uh, file system explorer the folder I'm going to use is this demo folder and I've got two folders within demo one of them is audio and it's got a couple mp3 files there and I've got downloads which has got a couple um, just uh, software for a Mac OS so there's three files in each so just to make this as simple as I can I'm gonna go back to to this screen and I've got another folder here which is gonna show you um, uh, the two two folders we got so downloads I've got three files in there now and this is this is actually a share on my server so I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few more files into here So now I got six files and I'll clean that up. And I'm also going to go into my audio folder here and I'm going to add in a few more files as well. I've only here, let's I got two more files here. Let's drag these in. I didn't give me permission to drag those. Okay, so let's find something else. All right, it doesn't have to be a music file. We'll just drag a couple more over here. I'll clean these up. Okay, so now I've got six files in each of the folders. Now, I'm going to go back here now, and I'm going to show you if I go into that same demo folder. There's still only three files in here. And there's still only three files in there. But now if I go down on my cache disk, I go into demo, audio, there's those three new files I copied. You'll see they're actually on the cache drive right now. Oops, let's go back in there. They're actually on the cache drive right now instead of being over in the actual array. And that's pretty normal. Now for these three small files, I could have just if I didn't have a cache drive, you wouldn't have noticed much difference. Uh, this is just for the concept. I could have uh, put anything up to a terabyte on this uh, cache drive. Now, normally what would happen is I would wait until 3, 4 in the morning, or 2, 3 in the morning, and this task called Mover would run. I'm going to go ahead and force that to run now. Click to invoke the Mover. <coughs> and it's trying to take just a second because, uh, again, these are small files, and it wasn't much in the queue. So I go into my uh, cache drive, go into demo. You can see it's now empty. And if I go up to my file system here, go into demo, and you can see here all my files are now in the proper place. That's essentially how the cache drive and the mover works. Oh, and I do want to just show you one other thing here. Um, let me just copy one more thing into this demo directory. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, okay, so there's another file copied up there. And again, you can see if I go in here, there's my, my file I copied. But what I want to show you is if I go to my shares, you can see here um, it's got this little orange thing this little orange warning symbol and what that's telling you is some or all files in this share are unprotected now again from the share directory if I go in here uh, you'll see everything so it doesn't really matter here if it's in there's that new file from here you can't really discern whether or not that file is in the cache or if it's actually in the directory that's all obfuscated by the file system so when you access the server it doesn't really matter where it is physically located it's in that share and you can get to it. And that's kind of the beauty of this, right? Um, but if I go up one level here, you can see here, it's just warning you that, you know, everything's not on a, a protected array. And that's kind of where this comes in, right? So if I were to go back and run the mover again, uh, give it a second. I go back to shares. Uh, it's probably gonna refresh, Let's see. Yeah, it should be cleared by now. Okay, well, I guess it takes a little while to clear that. But generally, after everything's been moved, uh, that'll turn green as we saw when I first came in here. 
So that's basically it. So um, that's how Unraid works with the cache. Uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and click like. If you've got suggestions for other demos regarding Unraid or any other NAS system, um, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And this is Mike. Take care.